Brett, how important were uh, JJ and Ursan in that turnaround late in the third and in the fourth as well? I mean, they were huge. The three-point shot that Ersan hit at the end of the period and Ersan keeping balls alive, you know, the offensive rebounding uh, part of uh, the game was, was, was significant. I know you guys talked a lot about knowing what to expect from Miami coming to this game, but um, did you learn anything from your team uh, today? Did you feel like this is what they were made of, or did you discover something new with the way they handled things, kept their composure, and uh, were able to grind this one out today? T to me, the thing that most stood out is we, we flipped our whole discipline in the fourth period. We, we, we guarded, we stayed way more with our rules and our game plan than we did in the first three periods. The fact that you can actually win a playoff game with this volume of turnovers is mind boggling. And, you know, we settled down in the fourth period and had only three. And the execution that the team showed when it mattered with, you know, some small, small pick and roll stuff offensively won us the game. Um, Joel Embiid's presence at the rim in the fourth period won us the game. And, you know, the fourth period, you ask the question, like, what do you learn? The first three periods, I, I mean, I was shocked to look up at the scoreboard and not feel like you're just down 15, 14, 18, given the way the game went. And um, the fourth period execution and determination uh, is what most stands out in, in regards to what did I learn. Coach, with a team that continues to grow, uh, is this something that can build the confidence of a team that you can win a game like this uh, with, like you said, that amount of turnover, shooting the ball the way you did? It's one thing when things are going smoothly, but moving forward, what kind of confidence does this give your, your team? I think, it, I think it does provide a platform of... Uh, sort of future growth, I, I get really excited. I, I, I'm shocked that we won this game. Uh, we, we really didn't have a right to win the game. We, I thought that defensively in the first three periods, we were a, 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 a C minus. I, I thought that our turnovers were an F. And yet, you know, we come out the other side with a, with a win against an amazing sort of organization of, of winning and culture and history, you know, to win two games on the road in the playoffs, let alone down here in Miami, you know, it's a real statement. I, I get excited because I can see we can take this portion of the NBA season and use it as a way to continually improve. I, I see so much, so much in so many areas, individually, team, that, that we need to improve on and in uh, if we want to keep moving forward. And so the growth of the team, you know, will it provide a platform to move on? That Probably. But I really internally get excited because I can see how much growth we really have to grow and give um, as this thing plays out. Coach, I'm just wondering, like, how do you assess or react to that skirmish in the second quarter with Ben and, and Robert and James Johnson and, you know, all those guys getting involved? What's it was always going to happen. You know, you didn't have to be sort of a mystic to predict what this game was going to look like. And, you know, the discipline of, you know, no bench clearing and, and no ejections, that, that was what was most on my mind and we spoke of. You know, in my former life, we all remember Robert Ory hip-checking Nash into the scorer's table and, you know, Boris and Amari stepping on a court. Phoenix probably would have won the NBA championship that year. And, you know, the discipline of how do you react to what was always going to be a physical game and stay at some level composed uh, was important to us. And, and I thought we were okay. We can get better. But uh, it was always going to be a part of this game's landscape. I know you talked to us about that uh, before practice yesterday. Did you also talk to your group about, hey, you know, stay composed if X, Y, Z happens? Always. You know, we're always talking about it. I'm always talking to my assistant coaches about policing the bench. You know, as a staff and as a team and managing 
the anxiety and the physicality that this game was always going to have uh, is, you know, it's just part of my job. And uh, I, I hope we did it okay. Right. Everyone, everyone gets that Ben and Joel are elite talents. That's, that's obvious. Why? There, there just doesn't seem, doesn't seem to be a learning curve with these guys. They just seem like, even, a, even in this atmosphere on this stage, they just seem to rise to it. Is, what is it about those two guys that, that, that they never really seem to feel, they never seem to show growing pains? I mean, I, I bet there's a common denominator when you start studying great players. Like, I, I, think, I think that those two players, and I do not use that word lightly, I think that those two players have the chance to be great. And they, they are ours. To f- look at those two guys, and Joel has got no right to be doing some of the things that he's doing. Like tonight, I thought he'd come back to earth a little bit offensively. Like he, he did struggle offensively, but he was massive defensively. You know, I think Ben's composure down the stretch, and I, I didn't take him out. You know, and he's one of these rare athletes that, that, that rarely do I say, oh, Ben Simmons is tired. He, he doesn't seem to fatigue, you know, blatantly. I, I'm told he's the first rookie since Irvin Magic Johnson to post a playoff triple-double. Um, and I think that there's greatness in both of those two players. And uh, they're, they're fantastic teammates. They coexist well. You know, the whole territorial side of NBA basketball and, you know, how you deal with fame and, and, and notoriety, that in itself is an evolution and part of what I really pay attention to coaching. You know, how do you grow those two guys together? And they need each other. They need each other, and, and they understand that. And uh, I think that those two guys were, were exceptional tonight, mentally, physically, and, 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 and certainly, you know, drove the win home. Coach, even in game two, which the uh, Heat won, you guys have closed these past three games strong with really uh, game-changing runs. Uh, Can you explain what's been the the reason for that, why you guys have been the team that's been able to be the strong finishers? I think it's it's something that's been trending, you know, over – we won 17 games in a row. And, uh, you know, the Miami Heat came into our building and, 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 and beat us. And, and they did it in a way that we hadn't experienced, you know, for probably a month and a half. And I feel that we have been trending in a way that the fourth period execution, the fourth period mentality, uh, defensively driven, um, has been our sort of uh, identity. And then you go to the other side and you say, well, we did a pretty good job of not turning the ball over. You know, three turnovers by our standards is an A+. And I thought that we executed some of our play calls down the stretch well, you know, putting J.J. and Ben in some pick and rolls. And, you know, we had a few key baskets uh, late executing our sort of half-court world. And um, I don't know. It's just the combination of both sides of the ball and – the way things have been trending, say, in the past month and a half gives me tremendous confidence that that's what we're emerging to be. I, I don't think that this was an outlier. Right, you were saying you didn't expect to win this game. It, it didn't seem like it was going to happen. And also that, you know, they had that volume of turnovers. We haven't seen you guys have a game like that in a while. What do you attribute that to, the first three quarters, the kind of scattered nature of it? I mean, we all go back, and I assume you do too. You, you know, you watch the Washington-Toronto game, and then you see the Boston-Milwaukee game. And any, if any of us were to walk out of our living room or here and say, oh, that's amazing, I never expected that, that's not how I see it. Like, that's the fight NBA athletes and players give, especially at home. And so coming into this game t- uh, this afternoon, you know you're going to get the Miami Heat's best. It's a culture of winning. They've won championships. Spose a hell of a coach. You knew they were going to be all wound up. Like I said before, you didn't have to be a mystic to guess what this was going to look like. And they jumped us, and we didn't handle it well. And we had multiple turnovers. I thought in game three, 
like we responded to the physicality with only 12 and we did some things fundamentally, you know, more correct. There were several times in tonight's game that that they got the better of us. And, you know, this environment um, got the better of us a little bit. We didn't manage it or handle it that well. And to one of the journalists points a moment ago, it's where I get excited. I feel like we have so much more to grow and give. And when you look at sort of like the heart of the team, the, 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 the passion of the team, they, they, they really enjoy each other's company and they fight for each other. They really fight for each other. And that's shown in the fourth period. And so what was different, you know, with the turnovers was that, like they're playing for their lives. And, uh, you know, there's nothing easy with this Miami Heat team. I got a tremendous amount of respect for, uh, for, for their coach and for their organization and how they've played. It seems like you guys made Miami's desperation the theme for this game, but now going back home up 3-1, um, is there a message that you leave your team with or a mindset going to a situation like that? You know, we all sort of concoct a story for each of these games. And I don't see it like that. I may have 15 years ago, but I, I think each story, each game is very clear. Like, you, you're going to go try to win the game, and you can guess all the peripheral things that are going to influence the game. The, the respect that we have, the appropriate fear that we have, we're going into Philadelphia looking forward to playing in front of an amazing home court and I think a good home, a tremendous home court advantage. Just trying to just do our job. It's, it's, it's either that boring or that simple. Write it, say it, however you want to do it. That's how I see it. And we saw it the, all the way, you know, during our, our, our winning streak. Nobody ever came in and, like, thought, you know, here we are. Nobody ever thought that. Led by me. That's my job. And so we're going to come in. We're going to bunker down. We want to get better. There are several areas that we can get better at. And we will show those and talk about those freely. And we will be going back to Philadelphia with that in mind. We want to get better. And we sure hope that that equals a win. Thanks, Brett. Thank you.